Hello everyone and thank you for joining me uh, on this journey of COVID-19. Um, I'm about to give you some insights about section 10.6 which uh, I, I'm quite aware we have already covered in class before spring break. So this is just a reminder of some tips on how to be successful uh, when it comes to solving radical equations. Now at the very top here I've attached a syllabus the remaining days that we have when our final exam is so we can have this mental uh, readiness as we get near exam 5 which is Thursday, exam 6 further down the road and then the final exam. Alright so not we don't we don't really have a lot of days left. All right, so I've outlined in a few bullets down here, three bullets to be exact, uh, some of the guidelines when solving radical equations, so you can read those. Uh, and I'm gonna try and refer to some of these as I'm solving a problem. So with the first example, as I could see, the radical is already isolated, it's already by itself. So this gives me uh, the green light to square both sides. So because the index is two, I have to square both sides. And we saw that when you square a square root, the square root goes away. Hence, on the third line, the radical is gone. And then on the right side, don't forget to square five, which is five times five, and that gives us 25 and then you can finally get x by itself. Now, in the third bullet, this is another reminder that you have to make sure you check your answer at the end, provided the index is even. Well, since in this example the index was 2, which is an even number, I need to make sure I check that 33 actually works. And when you do the check on the right side, it actually does work. So done. Example number two is a little bit different because the radical is not by itself. So expect on the exam, some radicals will be isolated and some are not necessarily going to be isolated. So it's going to be your job to get those radicals by themselves if they're not isolated already. So once I subtract the two from both sides, now I have the green light to cube both sides since the index is three right here. So I gotta make sure I use the same power as the index. That's why I'm using a three on both sides. So don't forget the right side would be negative two times negative two, this many times times negative two, which gives me negative eight. All right, that's usually where the mistakes happen. Not, not squaring or not cubing correctly. On the left side, which is a nice side, the radical goes away once again. So now we can finally get x by itself. So I'll let you fill in the blank and you should end up with the answer negative 13 over two. Okay, so in this example, I really do not have to check my final answer because the index was not even. So I can move on to the next example. The next example is similar to the second example, where the radical again is not by itself. Now I would recommend you probably pause the video and see if you can get through it yourself first, and then you can unpause it to see if you got it right. <clears throat> All right, so I'll assume you paused it and you did your work and you realized that the radical needed to be isolated by subtracting six from both sides first, and then you can square both sides. Since the radical has an even index, we'll make sure to check our answer in the end. Now, once you solve for x, you get 30. <clears throat> so here again, be careful, because negative six multiplied by negative six should give you positive 36. Okay, very good. Once you check 
30 by going back to the original equation you get a false statement so therefore you must reject 30 and you'll be left with no solution all right again I would probably write this down on a separate sheet of paper and uh, try it again yourself first to see if you can get through it the process should be the same okay very good I assumed you paused the video and that you realize that you have to square both sides since they are already on opposite sides you can do that once the radical is gone once again so here the radical is going to be gone so that leaves you the next uh, that takes you to the next step and then you can try and get x by itself now hopefully we got x equals zero make sure you check your answer once you do you realize that they are equal hence x equals zero is the solution to the problem so as I promised in class today there will be a quiz at the end of this video your first quiz on chapter 10 so you should grab a blank sheet of paper you should write down the problems and you should work them out you have until Tuesday tomorrow 11 59 p.m. if you're listening to the video today if you listen to the video on Tuesday then you have until 11 59 p.m. on Tuesday night to turn in your quiz obviously if you're done way earlier than that you can submit it at any time before that indicated time so here are the five questions that you'll need to answer so you can probably pause your video so you can write down those questions and probably scroll down afterward <clears throat> pay attention to the index we will have another quiz on another uh, the next video as well which is going to be coming up uh, later on tonight uh, which is basically a summary of what we've done so far just to make sure we're comfortable uh, with simplifying radical equations number five I don't just need the answer uh, please give me the answer first to number five but then also I'd like you to explain in your own words how you would go about explaining the process to number five to appear what should you do how do you add like terms how do you subtract like terms and what should you not do and that's essentially what I typed up underneath the question so once again once you're done with the quiz take a picture of your work and email it to me thank you very much guys for joining me and stay tuned for the next video which will be well you'll get it You'll get an email from YouTube once that one is uploaded. All right. Bye for now. Adios.